Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com, to another blog, to another podcast access through the Be Young Ministry YouTube page. Today we continue in our study of the gospel according to John. We're in chapter 6, verses 10 through 15, which reads, Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. That's John chapter 6, verses 10 through 15. Today we continue in our study of the 20th miracle performed by the Lord Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000. Now you're probably sitting there saying, wait a second, we just had the first and second. Well, John doesn't do it that way. There's a lot of data that is covered by the other three synoptic gospels that John doesn't cover. Mark's account of this passage and of this miracle tells us how the Lord Jesus did this miracle. Mark says that Jesus blessed and broke the bread, according to Mark chapter 6, verse 41. <clears throat> then he gave the bread to the disciples to distribute to the hungry people. Here again, the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of man is accentuated. There was a continual supply until the whole multitude of 5,000 men were fed. Most speculate that this crowd included women and children, and it could have been anywhere from 15 to 20,000. Can you imagine so many people? And so little, God uses so little to get the job done. Such are the ways of God. I direct your attention back to the one who provided this meal. No one in the crowd would have imagined that this little boy was carrying the means for this miracle. Not even the boy. I can only imagine in the morning when he got up, and his mother probably prepared his meal. <laughs> Perhaps he balked at it. I don't. We don't know. We don't know all those details. But he had no clue. He just thought this was just another bag lunch. And this was one little boy in the crowd with a little meal. But he had been chosen by God to be a significant piece of the Messiah's redemptive plan. Not only for that one day, but for the rest of human history. Because he's a part of the story. A major part of the story. We will never know how God will use us, despite the fact that we have so little to offer God. The Lord Jesus knows how impotent we truly are. Yet with him in the equation... Our impotence is not a deterrent. He is the one who is writing our stories. He can do eternally amazing things with the little fragments of our little lives. The key for us is to be available and willing to be used by him. In fact, he measures our success all through scripture by our faithfulness. It was a Wednesday night, and I had to go to Food Lion to purchase a few things for the remainder of the week. As I turned from one aisle to another, the Lord gave me a message. 
or a man who was at the other end of the aisle. You're probably wondering, how did I know that? It was an impression in my heart. The same impression I've experienced so many times in my walk with the Lord, I can't even count. But the Lord said to me in my heart, I didn't hear any audible voices, never have, but I knew in my heart, the Lord wanted me to say something to this man. I balked for what seemed like a, an eternity. I told, I told the Lord that this man would probably think I was crazy. To make a long story short, I finally and fearfully obeyed. I said to the man, the Lord is aware of your discouragement. Don't give up. No sooner had I told the man that message that his eyes filled with tears. And then he told me that he was a pastor of a local church here in Elgin, which is just outside of Columbia, South Carolina. And he had just told the Lord that he was quitting after that night's deacons meeting. <laughs> Can you imagine? I was afraid that this guy was going to think I was a nut. The Lord had other ideas, and it was for this man's benefit. Needless to say, I went away amazed at how the Lord Jesus works in this world. I tell you this true story to encourage you to step out and do his bidding. Like the little boy in this true story, you will never know how you will be useful to God, to the God of all creation, until you step out in faith. Of course, it's not just any faith. It's faith that is placed in this God who has entered our life through the coming of his son, the Lord Jesus, the God of the Bible. Well, back to our story in John 6. After the hungry people had eaten and they were satisfied, the Lord Jesus commanded the disciples to gather up all the leftovers. And wouldn't you know it, there were 12 baskets of leftovers, one for each of the 12 disciples. In those days, every Jew had traveled, who traveled, carried a basket. These were the full baskets after this miracle had been performed. Like the miracle of turning the water into wine, this miracle was primarily for the disciples. When the people saw the sign, which he had done, they said, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. The disciples were on the verge of saying, this is the Christ, the son of the living God. Because this story takes place in Matthew chapter 14, and it was in Matthew 16, that Peter uttered those infamous words, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Once the people reached the obvious conclusion, they immediately wanted to set the Lord Jesus up as the king. They wanted to use God to work for them according to their ideas. Their idea of a king was different than what the Lord Jesus had in mind. This story is given to teach us that this is not the kind of relationship we are, our, we are to have with God. No, it's less of me, more in him. I find it very instructive that the Lord would not consent to being lauded as a king by these people. Like the Lord Jesus, our greatest privilege is to see ourselves as his instruments, his servants, doing what he wants, not using him to do what we want to do. My friends, I trust this blog and podcast are useful to you in your walk with the Lord. Should I be in a position to be helpful to you further, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.